Good afternoon from Savannah. This is a rehash of my former reports from the Moorport channel. It's been a while, long time since I've done anything uh, on the computer. Thought it would be an appropriate time to try to circle back and understand a little bit of what's been going on. So, I years ago when I first arrived in Savannah after Aspen, I started a project of, I was trying to create this character and uh, under putting in a s certain perspective of what was going on in the world and what was going on in the life, specifically dealing with Louisiana and somewhat Georgia, but for the most part, Savannah is just a place to live. It hasn't really, there hasn't been much going on here. So this dealt a lot with uh, previous life missions. So the Moorcourt Channel became uh, a videogra videography of my character, who I was becoming. And it was after living in Aspen for all those years and developing this career. I, I came up with this idea for a character a long time ago, a head of state, my name being Louie, and uh, a head of state from Louisiana and different things I was trying to accomplish in life, but I'd never had the tools or the, tra uh, the ability to get anything done. And so I have, I was just recording a lot of different raw material in hundreds of hours of raw material. And uh, it should be an interesting perspective. It's something to go, I go back and watch it from time to time. It's funny to a degree, even though there is a lot of truth buried into the details of what could have become. Uh, it, it deals a lot with what could have become in the uh, in this scenario, because it, we being around the, the Savannah College of Art and Design, the, the uh, I was trying to portray myself as an artist, which I have been for many, many, many years from the time I was a writer back in the day, um, an artist. I managed bands, I booked bands, I had a lot of friends in the art community and uh, so that kind of started where I was going but I never achieved anything, I never got anywhere per se and so this was a culmination of what had been going on in my opinion of what I w was becoming, of what I could have been and therefore I was, it was a what if scenario uh, hidden under the Moore Court channel uh, because it was speculation, a lot of it, but it could, there was a lot of truth buried in the speculation, and then you've got to take some of it with a grain of salt. It's entertainment. It's very, it should be looked at as comedy, but there's a lot of truth in there of what's going on in the scenario of what I, what I had taught myself to think, and therefore, um, was able to do. And this goes back to if I will ever achieve anything, any sort of uh, notoriety from this. I'm still stuck in a very similar situation to where I was before in Savannah. Don't have, I can't sell a book. I've published, I've got stories online. I wrote a book. What, what happened was I went to Aspen ended up living there, lived under the delusional, the delusions of being the top echelon. Aspen is a top echelon place. And I was, me, me being Louis from Louisiana, so I started thinking like this. And then I have thought like this before in the past because it was something that I wanted to accomplish. And so I, uh, I started coming up with these scenarios of what things could be better or what things were wrong or what things might need what needed changes and things like that or ways to improve society or things like that and documenting them um, to try to understand what's going on. So 
it goes back to the Van Gogh syndrome. Will these tapes ever reach the light of day after I'm gone? If I, or what will ever happen? Will my, will I ever reach any sort of notoriety or stay hidden? And I guess that's a key question here um, of if I will ever get anywhere. It's, and it's the funny part about it is, and it's not funny, it's sad in this modern society sort of thing is you're so closely and connected to everything these days but unless you have your shred of truth or your shred of reality your reality is nothing more than a fantasy and so therefore my world has been a fantasy because I don't have that shred of reality or the shred of truth of what's going on in the world and I can't really do anything about it and I've been trying to I tried. I tried to get agents. I tried to sell some books. I tried to start businesses out this whole time since I I started, let's see, when I first moved to Savannah making these tapes, I got a computer with a with a uh, camera on it and I started making these tapes. And it was just a way of me to, it was nothing, it was entertainment to a degree, but it was a way of getting something, feeling accomplishment of what I could become or might become or was becoming or whatever it was and so the question now is will I ever receive any sort of notoriety or fame from this that's the uh, Van Gogh syndrome as you would because he because a lot of what I said could be could be seen as crazy but a lot of what I was saying was also I was it was a blend of fantasy with reality and so it really took a primer to try to understand what I was trying to say. And I went off on tangents. I would go off and just go and go and go and go off on these spiels. It was almost like rapping as uh, I was just talking about theories and things like that. And I went off on a lot of different tangents. There's hundreds of hours of tapes on there on YouTube. And one day it could be looked at as a great artist uh, or... Um, a who knows and that's the thing I'm trying to put into that's what the purpose of this is I don't feel like doing these tapes anymore because I'm grounded I'm more grounded in reality I started a regiment of meds which really zonked my creativity it was my creativity which I always had ADHD or ADD and, and the creativity lent me into these fantasy roles and then a lack of reality, a lack of success in reality made me put my, um, put myself into these positions of trying to understand what was going on or what might be going on. And so the question is, will I ever get anywhere with this? And uh, I've been trying to, the, what's the character I became or become? And what, it, it could be seen as, a, I mean, I've got enough writing online. I've got enough videos. I've got, my Twitter account is huge. Uh, my Facebook is huge. And it deals, with, the thing you've got to be able to realize is when you look at something, I was writing under certain perspectives. Um, this head of state um, perspective and so I was heavily vested in this head of state character and so a lot of it might seem wacky but in actuality there's a lot of truth buried in there what it, it was what I could have become if I had done the right thing but instead I'm stuck here I'm not even in Louisiana and I'm trying to help elevate the state my new put my my this isn't new this is something I'd come up with a long time ago was this idea for a Latin American economic evolution counts conference in Louisiana they would open up a lot of doors it could turn Louisiana into a world power similar to like the World Economic Forum or the South by Southwest put this conference in Louisiana, probably New Orleans is where it would have to be because of the accommodations. There's no place like Davos in um, Louisiana where you could afford to bring in the creme de la creme of the economic minds. And so it'd probably take place in New Orleans, which is a, a, 
something that's got plenty of room there and it, it really could out turn into something there could there could be all sorts of ways of attacking this could turn into something like south by southwest with a heavily latin american influence um but basically it would be a conference that would identify potential strengths in Latin America and figure out ways to facilitate the transition to record realization. And um, so this would, this would be a, it, it would take a look back in 20 years and look at what it, what it could become. It's really, I can, I have a picture of what I think it could become, but Latin America is falling behind in my estimation. Amer America is a, a, a global leader, then it's fighting its battles with China, and Europe's kind of in a stagnant phase. But Latin America is a huge asset resource of resources that is just not realized. They just don't seem, they seem to be bogged down in the uh, traditional sense, but they don't seem to have the growth. So my plan is to have this growth potential um, identified, uh, build trade bridges between Louisiana and Latin American countries to be develop businesses. Uh, things like the World Economic Forum had mentioned smart cities, build smart cities in Latin America where you bring corporate, it's civic and corporations working together along with the uh, with the people of, of the uh, Latin America in order to develop this thriving um, seed, as you would, that would help facilitate growth in all sorts of ways. And there are a lot, there's a lot of potential there, but uh, it would be a lot of Americanizing Latin America, but in the right ways. America has done a lot of things and it's not necessarily in the right ways. So there are some ways to correct some of the problems and balance this. It, it, it would look more, look more European versus uh, American and see which way, and the countries would decide which way they want to develop. Um, so this was the idea I've come up with recently and uh, it's difficult to facilitate that sort of trend or project, but it, I, all I can do at this point is ideas. And when you look back at my, it, it's just, it's a, it's a solid idea of what could become, and it could really help the state, not to mention uh, promoting Walter Isaacson, who is a hugely um, well-known figure in global power dynamics. The Aspen Institute is the creme de la, is one of the creme de la creme of power politics and power economics in the world and Isaacson was uh, president of that for a long time and um, he met everybody and interviewed everybody. It was his job. He's a he's a he's in the media by but he could transition into something. And I came up with this idea of turning him into a Grand Duke of Louisiana, as far as an alternative form of leadership. Um, Louisiana needs right now. Louisiana is being taken advantage of by a lot of the other. They they don't have the power political players out there. They're trying to create some, and the system itself is saying, well, if you do the right thing, we'll create some power political players. But this is allowing Louisiana to play both sides of the coin. They cannot still work towards creating more power political players in the um, economic and political scenario. But this would give them the opportunity to develop a different form of leadership and really get there. There is no direction or guidance. It's just it's a it's chaos, a snowball rolling downhill sort of thing. But and it's going to get worse, especially once they start trying to pay back all of the debt. The debt is created by this. There, there's a divide, and there is a hatred out there. And it's getting worse and worse and worse. And it's only going to get worse once they try to pay back the debt. When they start trying to pay back the debt, this animosity is going to grow even further. The right's not going to allow, like all the entitlement programs. The left's going to want more entitlement programs. But there's no money to pay for it. 
Um, and so this gives them the opportunity to try to have some other steering mechanism in there, not to mention the economic development, the evolutionary conference would create a growth potential. Louisiana should be competing with Texas, and instead it's competing with the SEC states. The SEC states are really good at football, but they're not necessarily good at um, governance. There's a lot of the worst states in the country are in the SEC states, and that's a shame. But that's you know what they what what's got to happen. So this would give Louisiana, Texas is a beacon of what could become. It's a, it's really grown in South by Southwest is a monumental uh, media um, facilitator. Not to mention all of the other technology industries, not to mention you have oil. Louisiana has oil industry, but it hasn't done anything with it. Louisiana, Texas has a lot, created a lot of oil companies. Louisiana has a lot of smaller oil, com oil companies, but you don't have your ExxonMobil, you don't have your Gulf Oil, or you don't have any of these other um, heads. None of them are uh, based in Louisiana. And the ones that were, like Freeport McMoran moved to Arizona. Um, some of the other oil companies, Shell had a big operation in New Orleans, they moved to Houston. And it dealt a lot, a lot of it had to deal with the lack of, Louisiana just didn't, it, Louisiana's a party state. And, you know, they just don't have any real leadership there. They're trying to play the games, but they had, oil allows for, uh, so rather than having a lot of low income jobs, oil industry allows for a lot of higher income jobs. It creates a lot of jobs. And so Louisiana has a lot of money at the lower end. The problem is, is it's not reinvesting in it. it, it if you look at like Halliburton was created as an oil services company or uh, Baker Hughes um, and they are unable to, Louisiana never really grew these subsidiary industries. Not to mention it doesn't have, uh, it's not doing its part as far as developing new industries to grow within. So Louisiana is kind of stuck in this place and they can and this my plan helps Louisiana move forward smartly it gives ideas options and things like that of what could become and uh, so where to go from here and the question is if the you take this seriously or if it's just another one of these goofy ideas so I'll be remembered as a goofy idea my van my van Gogh syndrome I'll have come up with a ton of good ideas these big I I'm a big idea person but I'm not necessarily good at facilitating because I just don't have the resources to get anything done I don't have the people around me I don't have the money I don't have the connections to get anything done and so therefore I must um, come, I, I, I've got to hope that somebody thinks this is a good idea and somebody will take advantage of this. Otherwise, Louisiana is going to be mired down in the bottom of the, they're going to be, and I just read today that Louisiana is considered the second worst education system in the nation. They don't care about, they care about a good time. They don't necessarily care about the future of the people per se. Um, and so they've got to fix, really fix the problems rather than this status quo of what's going on. There's got to be some way to bridge the gap and move towards the future. Um, be more like Texas and uh, develop new industries and things like that. But the problem is um, nobody's, the leadership of the state is so stuck in their political games. If they try to do something out, if they do something outrageous, do something, and then they have, they stand the chance of possibly losing their positioning, even though they're not positioned that well to, to set to start with. So Louisiana's got to come up with some sort of plan. 
and I've tried playing the Louis role. It goes into a lot of different aspects. And, and that's the problem with me is when I live in this scenario of being stuck in between fantasy and reality. I'm trying to create reality out of fantasy. But the problem is, is I'm unable to do anything and get anything done, accomplished. So I must make some of these grand schemes facilitate a payoff or something like that um so my question is is where to go from here and what to do from here and uh, i my next plan is probably start writing some letters i'm getting a printer um start writing some letters savannah doesn't seem to be that concerned with uh building a bridge um to louisiana I think they're stuck in this Atlanta Falcons or Georgia Bulldogs scenario, whereas they're happy with who they are and they don't necessarily want to build a bridge because of animosity. And so I'm stuck here as a facilitator trying to accomplish something, but I can't get anything done. Either I was trying to start my own business, I wanted to start a website. There was a that it was a good idea. It could have made it could have broke even for until I expanded into where it would make more money. It was basically a website, an information website, arts and entertainments uh, website that would have concert listings, recipes from chefs from all over. It was a statewide, uh, so this would be like the state of Georgia or the state of Louisiana have recipes from all over the state, travel guide, travel tips, history lessons, uh, festivals, what's going on at festivals, who's filming what, where, as far as the movie industry, uh, all sorts of things, some news. Um, it, and so there's all sorts of ways to go about it. And um, the question is, how do you get there with no help? And my only way about it is I started making these tapes and now I'm just trying to explain my tapes. So what may seem to me to be way off base uh, could be just me a, a, a tangent. It's like brainstorming. A lot of my, a lot of these tapes were brainstorming, going off on tangents and things like that. But so far I'm unable to get anything accomplished and so the tangents seem wacky but in actuality it's good some are good ideas some are bad ideas some are good ideas some are bad ideas and so making it stick is the question of what could become um so the question is will this ever go anywhere and when i when and will history judge me fairly or am I going to be just uh, painted over as far as nothing because I have the lack of accomplishments and I mean I like all I can use is the tools that I have which seem to be Twitter Facebook YouTube um, and several in the computer I have and uh, I just I haven't been able to get anybody involved friends wise I'm virtually alone uh, I have been for a long time here. I don't have much support from my family other than the, you know, the basics. Um, but finding some way to facilitate change into something else is the necessity of what needs to be gone. So the Vincent Van Gogh syndrome, will I be famous after I'm dead, um, is a question. Um, and what will will the people be able to understand because a lot of it is some of it there's a lot of nonsensical in there but like i said it was a lot of it was just tangents and free verse uh rapping sort of way but with theoretical connotations so the question is what to do from here and i guess i could try again this i'll make this the end of my tape this is a good start for that but it's just understanding of where I've become and what I what I hope to become and things like that so hope y'all have a wonderful day